In the previous video, we made this wonderful mini skitty. That's so cool. But today we're gonna But today we're gonna be taking it to the next level and adding a couple features that'll really make it. Now the first problem, or I should say feature, that I'd like to improve upon is this arm. Now don't get me wrong, this arm works pretty great. It can lift a decent bit of weight but not enough weight. Also, because of the two to one gear ratio we have off of the servo, that gives us a very limited range of motion of about 90 degrees. Actually, a little bit less, more about 80 degrees. But here's the thing, I wanna be able to do wheelies, and so does this guy. I want the arm to be able to go from about here to here, well, actually, how about here? Nah, screw it, let's just go here. All the way to there. I interrupt your scheduled robotics program to give an important announcement. Thank you to everyone who supported the channel and allowed me to surpass 1,000 subscribers, and now we're coming around on 3,000 rather quickly. As a very small token of my appreciation, I made this one-of-one -one mini skitty that has a couple differentiating features, such as a hidden note on the bottom that only the person that wins will get to see. I'll be giving it away to celebrate crossing this milestone, so make sure you stick around till the end of the video to learn how you can win this little guy. And now back to your regularly scheduled robotics program. I do in fact recognize that a normal skid steer could not do this, but hey, you and I are the engineers on this project, okay? So we can do whatever the heck we want. There is one problem though. Most standard servos only have about 180 degrees of rotation, which isn't bad, but the next viable option after this SG90 servo that is also stronger is about a servo this size. And trust me, I have tried to make this fit into the mini skiddy, but it's just not happening. We could just turn this into a continuous rotation servo, which would allow us to keep our gear ratio of two to one, as well as also be able to achieve the full range of motion that we want with our arm. But I feel like asking that of you guys to do at home would be just a step too far. Think this so here's what I'm thinking. We're already using these N20 motors, which as seen previously, are pretty powerful. Instead of a servo, we're gonna add another H bridge onto our PCB, which will give us the ability to run this N20 motor, as well as an auxiliary DC motor in the future, if we ever want. To slow down the output of our N20 motor so our arm doesn't get too wet, I'm going to attempt to slap a planetary gearbox on the end of it. If you don't know what a planetary gearbox is, you can always go back and check out one of my previous videos where I built this planetary gearbox for my little Timmy Robotics project. Essentially, for every one gearbox you stack on the end of your motor, you get about three to four times the torque, but the output's also a lot slower. And yes, I did say stacking. I have about three of these stacked on a little Timmy, which gives this little yellow TT motor about 64 times the lifting power that it would normally have. So yeah, they're pretty sweet. You may be asking yourself, but how are you gonna fit that big of a planetary gearbox into the already small mini skitty? And my answer to that is that I recently learned that I could print much smaller gears than I had previously thought, which means a much smaller planetary gearbox. With the powers of 3D modeling, reverse engineering, small brain coding, 3D printing, and, and waiting? It doesn't work. Well, not good enough. To say the least, I spent the last 24 hours trying, attempting, hoping to make the smallest planetary gearbox I could that was also 3D printable. Look, this is my face, this is... This is a quarter, and this is our 3D printed planetary gearbox. The quarter is even just a little bit bigger than it is. So this thing is tiny. Now, the reason why it doesn't really work is because 10 teeth is the smallest number of teeth you can put on a gear in SolidWorks. Anything less is considered really, really bad practice, which is why I don't manually just make a nine tooth gear and use that in my model. Because of this, I went with two planetary gears, each one having 10 teeth so that it could be tiny, resulting in it being unstable and it liking to wobble more than a little. Am I a poet? If you're unfamiliar with how to make a planetary gearbox, essentially the number of teeth on the ring gear and sun gear have to be added together and then evenly divisible by the number of planetary gears. 30 teeth on the ring gear, 10 teeth on the sun gear added together gives us 40, which is evenly divisible by two planetary gears, being 20. Now you may be asking, why don't I just make the teeth smaller so that I can fit more teeth and have three planetary gears? And the answer to that is that 0.7 module, which is essentially the size of the teeth, is as small as I can go on my current 3D printer. Which got me thinking, why in the heck am I trying to make this a planetary gearbox in the first place? Keep it simple, stupid. What? Now I'm essentially pretty much just gonna take the gear that was on the servo, mash the dimensions a little bit, add a collar, and throw that on the N20, and live a long, happy, stress-free life. All right, so with the fancy new redesign of our arm to now use the N20 motor rather than a servo, giving us more power, 
It also means that we're gonna have to add another H bridge to our circuit board assembly. And here's what I'm thinking. I'm gonna go ahead and move where the butt converter currently hooks in to the front of the board next to the ESP32. And then I'm gonna try and smush this current H bridge location up just a hair and then hopefully be able to fit one more H bridge right below it. That's the plan. And then with that, we'll have two more of these blue terminal blocks, which I think I'm gonna try and mount one up here to replace the spot of the arm servo hook in. And I'm gonna mount one down here as an auxiliary. That way, if somebody wants to make or design a 3D printed auger for their mini skid steer, it's now a possibility because we have an auxiliary DC motor that can be used for whatever we want. All right, here we are one week later. We've officially got our new circuit board with our additional H bridge as well as our two new terminal posts. For one will be for our arm and the other an auxiliary weapon of choice. Choose your own adventure. But yeah, here it is stacked up against the previous model. I also added a little XT30 connector. That way it just makes one step easier in adding your little LiPo battery on there. Also, I realized that a couple of you bought electrical kits for me to support the channel, which I thank you so much for. And I didn't make the decision to make the generation two of the circuit board until about a week after I'd posted the video. And so if you're one of the people that got one of the generation one circuit boards, totally reach out to me on Discord and I will send you the version two totally for free. I'm so sorry about that, as well as the additional motor and everything else you need to make a generation two mini skinny. All right, so testing out the arm for the first time, it's already way stronger than generation one. Before I could only lift about 40 grams and now I can lift 150. So that's a win. Also, here's those promised wheelies. The arm is already a huge improvement, but now it's time to make a better bucket. One that's modular. Here's what I'm thinking. Holes here, here, so that we can put our pivot point there. We're gonna go ahead and remove this material in the middle. That way it can swing openly right there. We're gonna put another hole here and here. That'll kind of be where like the arm for the attachments will push on. And uh, yeah, it's gonna be great. It's gonna be like all right, so I just got the new bucket on there, and I might I say it is looking mighty fine. But one of the most underrated features that I actually added that I love so much is one, you can still open this back motor cover hatch thing and get to all your electronics that way. But also, now I actually added a pivot point so you can open it up just like the real deal, just like an actual little skid steer. I don't know why, but I find that so satisfying. And then it has a little clips like before so that it locks when it goes back down. But yeah. Just so you know, that's one of my favorite features right now. One other thing I changed when I was updating the bucket design to make it modular was I actually moved the servo mounting point down just a little so that it would raise the bucket or move it further away from the chassis when it's down. Before you could only bring it back to about right here and then you'd run into the tires as it's coming down. But now you can bring it back just a little bit more and not hit the tires. So yeah, that was one thing that was added. Makes it just a little bit more easy to use and Perfect. Now that we have the official modular bucket design, it's time to actually design and make our claw. And so this one's gonna be a little bit tricky, but what I'm thinking is I'll have another servo that'll just mount to the actual claw itself. So it'll kind of sit on top of everything. And then it'll have a little arm that'll run down to this pivot hole right here. And then the claw itself will attach. Wait, I explained that poorly. Okay, so the servo will be on top of the claw with the main pivot point being right here at the corner of the bucket. And then the secondary hole will be for the servo to run an arm in between the two so that it can push off of that. And then on the other side, I'll just set up a little support link that'll connect to. The reason why I don't just connect the servo directly into the pivot point like this, like I did here, is because I want the claw to have a lot of gripping strength. And so if I were to connect it here, I'd have a lot of range of movement. So I'd be able to open the claw, you know, 180 degrees. But when I come down to close it, I wouldn't really be able to close that hard on anything. But regardless, I want it to be able to, you know, go up to something, get a really good grip on it so that you can drag it away or lift it up or do whatever you're going to do with it. It's very late in the evening and I just pulled off our 3D printed claw. So we're gonna go ahead and throw that on really quick because I am way too excited and cannot wait till morning. So I'm gonna go ahead and assemble that real quick. Maybe try and, I will write the code if I'm committing this much, write the code and see how it goes. Oh, uh, and I also forgot to mention that I already see a couple different issues. One of which is I never accounted for the servo wire. So, and this is very zoomed in, but I never accounted for the servo wire. So mistakes were made. I'm gonna have to chisel that out with some pliers. But anyways, back to building.
<laughs> Alright, this is gonna be test number one with the claw attachment. This will be your guys' first time seeing it, my first time seeing it in action, so I am super stoked. Yeah, once again, it is very late, but I couldn't wait till morning, so we're gonna see what it looks like. Alright, initial thoughts are that it works, and it works pretty well for a 1.0 version of the claw. There's a couple things that I think I definitely want to change, the first being that I want the servo to be on the opposite side, that way it's closer to the actual routing of the wire, that'll give us just a little bit more room to actually play around and plug it in inside the main housing. Thing number two is even the smallest bit of wiggle in this pivot arm causes a lot of free movement with the bucket. And so I'm thinking that I need to tighten up this tolerance quite a bit. And if I do that, then I should get rid of this wiggle, hopefully. All right, before I show you the final results of all the upgrades we made to the Mini Skitty 2.0 this video, I'm back to tell you how to win this little guy. One, make sure you're subscribed. Two, hit the like button. Three, comment down below a robotics project you'd like to see in a future video. A winner will be selected two weeks from the posting of this video. All right, to go ahead and demonstrate all of the upgrades we made this video on the Mini Skitty, I went ahead and put together this little challenge where basically I'm gonna try and stack that red light on top of this soldering block after, or sorry, soldering wire spool after I place them behind me. As you can see, the solder was actually pretty heavy as when I brought it down, it actually lifted up the back end of the mini skitty. So to say the least, the arm is way stronger than it used to be. The claw also has a really impressive amount of pinching power. I put my finger in there and yeah, it, it definitely, like it didn't hurt, but it was definitely, there was some pressure there. I'm a seasoned mini skitty driver, so if I make this look easy, you know, don't feel too bad. So to add a little bit more of a challenge here, I have my little micro FPV drone box and my drone is currently in there and I just want to see if I could actually lift it up. This is pretty heavy, so as you can see, it weighs more than the mini skitty does. But it being a fun challenge, I really struggled with this for, I don't know, probably like five or six minutes. I really wanted to lift this thing up just with the mini skitty because it was so close. I finally had the aha moment to bring the box close into the mini skitty so that there was more leverage on it. And yeah, once I did have it, I didn't know what to do with it. So I kind of panicked. Also, for those of you wondering if the mini skitty can self right itself, without the claw, absolutely. With the claw, you have to get a little bit creative and have something to push off of. With this new Mini Skitty 2.0, of course, comes with new 3D models, code, a new circuit board design, as well as a step-by-step -step guide on assembly, which I apologize for not getting out sooner. All of this is linked below, and if you're looking for additional resources, make sure to check out the Discord channel where you can post your questions or learn from what other people have made. You'll also be the first ones to get access to any new updates or designs that I make for the Mini Skitty. Finally, if you'd like to support the channel, consider picking up one of the mini skitty kits linked below. It comes with all the electrical components you need, minus the battery and charger. All the proceeds go right back into funding the next DIY robotics project. Thank you so much for watching.